This is Alex Holcomb with Applied Information Sciences, and in this how-to, I'm going to show how to implement a custom router inside of Microsoft Office SharePoint Server 2007. I have a record center set up here, and what I want to do is implement a custom router. Uh, I'm not going to implement the logic for that router. I'll create a scenario and do that in a follow-up how-to. Uh, but in this one, we just want to get all the pieces in place for our router to make sure everything's going to work. The first thing I need to do is create a class that ultimately is going to house the logic for my router. I create a class that derives from the iRouter interface, and it's got one public method called onSubmitFile, and that returns a router result. In this case, we're just going to return a result uh, for success continue processing. Now, I need to compile this with a strong name, so we'll go ahead and build this. Uh, the next thing I need to do is make this assembly available to SharePoint. So I've created a batch script here. And what it does is it unregisters the assembly from the GAC, if it exists, and then it will install uh, the freshly compiled assembly. And then finally, what it'll do is it'll reset the application pool that SharePoint's running under. So let me go ahead and run this. So the next step we need to do is register this functionality as a router so SharePoint can recognize it. Now I've got a PowerShell script here that's going to do that for me. Uh, I'm going to use the Microsoft.SharePoint DLL and the Microsoft.Office.Policy DLL, so I include those in the script. Uh, the next step is to go ahead and define the information about my router class. Right? I give it a name, I get the assembly information, and uh, I get the, the fully qualified class name. So what I need to do is add this to the collection of routers that are available to, in my record center. Now the way I do that is I get an SP site and an SP web object for my record center. And then I get a record series collection object. Now this is basically uh, the record routing list and all of the items within it. Uh, what that provides me is this add router method where I can pass in this router information and it will go ahead and register my router and make it available to me within that record routing list. So if I go ahead and run this, uh, when I go back to my record routing list, if I look at this unclassified records item, I see that there's a router metadata field. If I look at the dropdown, I see that my metadata router is now available. Now likewise, I have an unregistered script here which will remove that from the collection of routers. Uh, basically what it does is it gets the record series collection again, and I call a remove router passing in the name of the router that I gave it uh, in the previous register script. So if I run this and go back to my list, I can refresh and I see that that router field is removed because I don't have any other custom routers here uh, and now it's not available to me. But we want to go ahead and make it available. So I'm going to go ahead and register it again and we'll add that router to this unclassified records item. So now anything that comes into the unclassified records that should be routed to that record series, uh, it'll execute the code in my custom router. So the last step is to actually send something to the record center. Now if I go to a document library, I have another team site set up here that's got a document in it. Uh, I look at the drop down and I want to do a send to record center. You'll notice that the record center is not available to me. I need to go ahead and set that up under Central Administration. So the way I do that is I go to Central Administration and Application Management, and then under External Service Connections, there's a link for Record Center, and this is where I define the connection information to be able to send things to my Record Center. So I go ahead and say I want to connect to a Record Center, and what I need to put in here is the URL to a web service that's contained within my Record Center. So the location of my Record Center is MOS RTMVPC slash records, and the location of the official file web service is slash VTI bin slash official file dot Azimax. So I go ahead and place that there, and I give it a name, and I click OK. Now when I go back to the shared documents location, if I refresh this page, I'll see that the Sintu now has this record center uh, link available to me. Now what I want to do is make sure that I've got everything in place, right? Make sure 
my class is going to execute, uh, make sure everything's registered properly. So I'm going to set a breakpoint here, and we're going to attach to the W3 worker process. And the final step is to go ahead and send something to the record center. So I come back, I click on that send to record center link, and this drops us into the code for our records router. All right, we see here, now we can do our custom processing. Now we've got access to what is coming in, in terms of content. So I see what record series we're in, I see the URL that this content uh, came from, uh, I've got access to the username who's submitting this and to the byte array that is the contents of this file. Uh, I've also got access to all the properties uh, as well as the expected destination uh, and a string for result details. Uh, so this is where I put my custom logic to evaluate uh, what I want to do with this content. So there's quite a few things that you can do here. Uh, you can modify the metadata before it actually becomes a record. You can look at the metadata itself to help determine which record series this record should go in or the specific location. In this case, we're just going to continue processing, right? Because we just want to make sure everything works. And so we get a nice result. We go back to our record center. And we see that it got processed normally and it's in the unclassified um, record series. So there's a document and all the corresponding properties. Uh, so we'll create another how-to that implements logic behind here, uh, behind our router. But in this one, we just wanted to get all the things in place.